Melbourne. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I rise to talk about our Prime Minister Tony Abbott's absurd addiction to roads, which is about to wreck what is good about inner city Melbourne. The Prime Minister and the Premier of Victoria, Dennis Napthan, are planning to push the East West Tollway right through the inner city. It will do nothing to fix congestion and everything to wreck what is good about inner Melbourne. On the 2nd of October, the Prime Minister briefly landed in Melbourne and managed to fit in a joint press conference with the Premier to spruit their pet project. But during this press conference, the Prime Minister revealed that he has absolutely no understanding of Melbourne, its congestion problems, its traffic needs or the impact of this monstrous project on our city and on our community. The Prime Minister said, and I quote, anyone currently sitting in a traffic jam on Hoddle Street, on Flemington Road, on Alexandra Parade knows that this, the East West Tollway, is a massive boost to their lives. And just before last year's federal election, on September the 2nd, he said, I've spent enough time on Hoddle Street, I've spent enough time on Alexandra Parade, and I've spent enough time on Flemington Road stuck in traffic jams to know just how important this is. I want it to be done. Now, the Prime Minister may not have a great grasp of Melbourne's geography and its traffic network, but if you are on this wonderful new east-west tollway, and you are wanting to get into the city, there are only two exits that you can get off at to come into the city. And you know where those exits are? One is at Hoddle Street, and the other is at Flemington Road. So in other words, the traffic jams that the Prime Minister is talking about on Hoddle Street and Flemington Road, they're the only two places where the thousands of cars currently on, or that are about to be on this new east-west tollway, can exit to get into the city. The east-west tollway is not going to provide you with a magical helicopter lift to get you in over the parks into the middle of the city. The people who are coming in from the east or from the west who want to get into the city to go to work are still going to have to use roads to get in there. And when they get on those roads, they are going to add to the congestion. And everyone in Melbourne knows which is perhaps why Dennis Napthine didn't chime in to back up the Prime Minister on this point. Everyone in Melbourne knows that if you want to get roads clearer and you want to get cars off the freeway in the morning, the best thing to do is to build a train line. The Prime Minister said before the last election that he invited the, uh, when he was the opposition leader, he invited the then Prime Minister to come down and stand at Hoddle Street and look down the Eastern Freeway in the morning. And he said anyone who did that would have to see that there's a problem. Yes, there's a problem, but I tell you what you see. If you stand on the Hoddle Street overpass and look down the Eastern Freeway in the morning, what you see is cars bumper to bumper, because people are coming in to try and get to work, as good as the West is, the people coming in on the, west from the, on the Eastern Freeway in the morning aren't wanting to go out to Flemington or Footscray or Kensington, they're wanting to get into the city. So they're in, stuck in traffic, bumper to bumper. You look and you see a bus lane that's a bit freer and has got a bit more space for cars to come down, for buses to come down. But when you look in the middle, what you see is a whacking great swathe of grass running almost the whole length of the Eastern Freeway. And you know why that's there, Deputy Speaker? That is there for the rail line out to Doncaster. That rail line has been promised to us for decades. In fact, if you go back and look in the Melway, I think it's from 1980, 1979, 1980, you actually see the rail line marked out there and they've marked out stops as well. That's how long this has been promised to us. So if you want to get 800 of those cars off the road, one train coming down the Eastern Freeway from Doncaster will do that. Have a proper service running and you will start to clear the Eastern Freeway. Have the Melbourne Metro coming in from the other side and you will start to clear the congestion that you find on Flemington Road. So, if the Prime Minister had any understanding of Melbourne traffic at all, he would know that not only is his project about to pour more cars onto Flemington Road and onto Hoddle Street. And as if you could fit more cars onto Hoddle Street, there's only one rule of traffic in Melbourne, and that is whatever time of day it is, wherever you're going, don't go on Punt Road or Hoddle Street. But the Prime Minister is planning to put thousands more cars onto Punt Road and Hoddle Street. But everyone knows the simple thing to do would to make, to be to make Melbourne 
a world-class public transport city. And you know, Mr Deputy Speaker, if you've been lucky enough to travel around the world, that you've been to a good city if you can get around without having to use a car. And Melbourne could be one of those cities. And it's not that difficult. All we'd need to do is build that rail line coming in on the Eastern Freeway from Doncaster. And you could have it skirting underneath Fitzroy and Collingwood to have a couple of stops there. Build the Melbourne Metro coming in from the west so that you can have a train stop underneath North Melbourne and underneath Parkville, where we have the university and we have world-leading medical research institutes, but no train stop there. You will not only take thousands of cars off the road, but you will make everyone in Melbourne breathe easier. And people in Melbourne need to breathe easier because perhaps the Prime Minister doesn't know, or I suspect he just doesn't care, but this new east-west tollway, when it is built, it is going to go within between 20 and 40 metres of people who live in the Housing Commission flats in Flemington. Now, these are people who are already about 100 metres away from the City Link overpass, and most people will fly on over it and see those towers there on their right or on their left as they do and not give it a second thought, but people live there. Currently, between the City Link overpass and their towers is a playground and is a community garden and is a community centre. All of that's going to go, and they are going to be opening their windows to be almost within touching distance of the new east-west tollway. Now, those people who live in the towers, I can tell you because I've been inside there, but more importantly spoken to many people who live there, have a couple of days over 40 degrees. Those concrete boxes do not lose the heat. They retain the heat. So when you've got families in there with kids, they have no option but to open the window at night because it is about 30 degrees inside one of those flats. And so when they open their window at night, if you happen to be living on the, about the fourth or the fifth floor, you will open your window and be 20 or 30 metres away from the east-west tollway. And if you live on the ground floor, in a surprise that no one saw coming because Premier didn't have the dignity to put this out to people before he signed off on the project. If you live on the ground floor, you are now going to open your window to find yourself next to a four-lane tollway, a four-lane uh, surface road that is about to take over the park and the community centre that they've currently got. So all of that, all of that in the name of getting more cars on our road in inner city Melbourne. All of that in the name of dividing what is good and separating parts of communities from others and forcing people to live within touching distance of a new road. And for this, people are going to lose their houses. For this, people are going to lose their houses. Collingwood resident Keith Fitzgerald, his house is one of those that's going to be forcibly acquired. He's 70 and he's lived in the house since 1944. And he's devastated that he is about to lose his home of 70 years, a lifetime, and it'll be destroyed. And where did this come from? This whole east-west tollway was hatched when the state Labor government was in power. The state Labor government, after 11 years in power in Victoria, the best that they could come up with for solving Melbourne's transport problems was to suggest the east-west tollway in the first place. And I remember how we had to go and fight to make sure that JJ Holland Park in Kensington wasn't going to be a staging ground for five or 10 years while they built this monstrosity. We fought Labor off then, now it's come back under the Liberals, but the good news, the good news is that there's a chance of stopping it yet again. Victorians will be voting soon, and they have a chance in the state election to put the Greens into balance of power. And so we will insist that the contracts be ripped up and that the rail line out to Doncaster be built instead. We know in Melbourne that you cannot trust the old parties. They talk big on public transport when it comes election year and then fail to deliver. I am sick of hearing people talk about the airport rail link once every four years at election time and then it disappears and never comes back ever again. Well, people are wising up. People are wising up. And there's a reason that the Greens are doing well in the polls in Victoria at the moment. It's that people want to fix Melbourne's congestion by building better public transport and by voting Greens they can get that.